our sages tell us that we have an obligation to see ourselves as though we left Egypt. This is not a time-bound obligation, it's for all time. But it is brought, this law is brought together with the laws of Pesach. But first we have to notice that the term used is obligation. We are liable, we are responsible to see that we have to, we have to see ourselves, we are responsible to see ourselves as though we left Egypt. We ourselves left Egypt. And the Alt of Kelm asks the question, how can it be that the whole Jewish people is obligated to see themselves as though they left Egypt? How can it be that every person can imagine such a thing? He can actually feel such a thing? What is this obligation? So he explains that, and this is amazing, because this is an idea that modern psychology has embraced, but the, the, the idea goes back to the earliest of sages. That an idea that we know with our senses, with our five senses. Now, when we imagine a scene, imagine ourselves leaving Egypt, we imagine ourselves as, we actually, as if it actually happened to us, so we're using our senses. In other words, we're imagining it, seeing it, and hearing it, and feeling it, experiencing it actually. So that which we sense with our senses, that which we feel, is much more powerful than that, we, than that which we know intellectually. And this is the obligation that the rabbis place upon us. In other words, we have to do, we have to make scenes for ourselves, we have to imagine for ourselves leaving Egypt. And this will help, obviously this will help us, because as the Ramban writes, the main purpose of, of, in, of internalizing the, the, the exodus from Egypt is that we should know the consequences of our actions, the reward and the punishment. The punishment that the Egyptians got for their cruelty and their willfulness and their evil. And the reward the Jewish people got for being loyal to Hashem and for crying out to Hashem. We have to know this. We have to know this. And therefore, we are obligated to try and imagine for ourselves and see for ourselves. Let's do it right now. Imagine that you are a slave in Egypt. You're being afflicted. You're being tortured, you're being overworked, not paid at all, and, and, and whipped. Overworked, you're underfed, you have no strength, you have no energy, and you have this very cruel Egyptian taskmaster causing you great suffering. And then all of a sudden, your savior comes, a savior, a salvation comes, a rescue comes, and you're given great wealth, tremendous wealth. You were, you were, you were the most downtrodden, miserable slave and now you're given tremendous wealth, you're set free, you march out with family and friends, you march out triumphantly out of Egypt. A triumph! And you're, you're, you're on the highest of highs. Let's imagine, let's picture that for ourselves. And in that way we can actually feel, we can feel that we have left Egypt. And this is something that can help us tremendously in terms of understanding life, knowing life, knowing the consequences of our actions, and being able to strive in our lives for the greatest happiness and success for ourselves and our families, our communities, for our presence, for our present and for our future.